All right, here we are, and away we go. All right, welcome everyone to the Friday Night Lighting Critique for week number something of the pandemic. Um, like I said, I am going to be here to take, be taking a look at the work that was submitted. Uh, a couple updates, reminders uh, off the top. A um, little housekeeping. We've got the lighting challenge for uh, this month, the Sci-Fi City is due at the end of the month. Again, $100 Amazon gift certificate to anyone who wins that. Uh, we've got some submissions here, so we can check that out. A um, Couple other announcements. We've got the Octane course, which you guys may know about now. Uh, Matt Wilson, CG um, uh, creative director and lighting lead conducted a Octane workshop course, which you can find on our website, academyofanimatedart.com. Um, but without much further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and hop over and share my screen and hide my window here. So, I'm gonna show you guys what we have here. So I've got, um, hide my window. Okay, so we've got a bunch of still images that were submitted here. And we're gonna be looking through those. Also have a couple of video submissions over here. Um, we're gonna kind of hop back and forth a little bit and um, just take a look at everything here. So these were in kind of randomized order. And so I'm gonna do a little roulette and see where we land for our first submission. As we are going through this, if anybody has any questions, if you're in Zoom, throw your questions in the chat window. If you're on Facebook, go ahead and throw them in the comments below and I will be checking them periodically throughout this. If you do not see your image in this, go ahead and post that as well, or go ahead and add that in the comments as well. Um, and I will make sure to round that up. Okay. so. Without much further ado, we are going to be starting here. Okay, so, um, Zavish X. Okay, so first off, uh, this is a this is a cool this is an interesting scene. I think it's um, I think I really like what you're doing. I think we can push the brights a little bit more. I know you want to keep it dark and creepy, um, but I think we like if we look at the levels here. Oops, if we look at the levels here. We can see that, I mean, I know, again, we want it to be dark, but like all of the values are down in this range. If I just like pull this down here, you can see that of the 255 um, range of the RGB scale, we're only using maybe a third, not, not even, like a quarter to a third of those values. So we want it to be somewhere, I would say take it somewhere in like here, and you can maintain a lot of that creepiness, you can maintain the creepiness the, and only seeing the rims here of these guys and only seeing the fingers. And then we're gonna get some more value out of this. So again, just like those value differences. And then the one thing that's really nice about this image that I really, really like and for other people to take note of is the blue specularity that's happening here on the back of the chair. It's just like really subtle shaping all across the little rivets all across the top. You can see it all along the side here, really beautiful stuff. Um, and then if it was me, I would allow the area back behind them, I would kind of darken this area in here um, and allow that to kind of fall back into space because it's we don't want the value of the ground to be uh, the same value as we're seeing in here to kind of to really kind of focus our eyes in there i do like the warm and cool balance um i would like to see a little bit of the warm light trickle in on the character here because right now her uh those values are matching up pretty closely with the with the seat back behind it and it would be nice to get some orange rim right here to kind of pick up the silhouette and help um the doll pop off from the, the background just a little bit but overall i think this is looking good the last thing that I would do, just because we have this square format, is watch out for the, like this right here is not, um, it's not it's not great compositionally. You don't want uh, the feet to be right up against the edge. You either want them to be cut off higher, or you want to leave leave a little breathing room here at the bottom. You don't want to do that because it's like it's like taking a full length portrait of someone and cutting them off like at the ankles. Like you don't, it's just kind of it's it's tough formatting. Um, before I go any further, I do want to hop over into Facebook, make sure. Dave Call, how's it going, man? I mean, Dave Call was one of my instructors in uh, school uh, 38 years ago, I think, somewhere. That's a rough estimate. 
But uh, it's good to see you, Dave. You, uh, Dave was my limit Linux uh, instructor, and I still can hear his voice every time I program in Linux. Um, okay, so now we've got Anton's, and I'm just gonna kind of go through these in order. I guess these are in alphabetical order here, but yeah. Um, okay, so Anton has this submission. It's an update from what we were seeing last week. Uh, the biggest things about this are the, and we talked about this a little bit in the, the student submission. So Francesco from DreamWorks commented on this, and I'll just kind of reiterate what he was talking about. So the, the first off is the girl is feeling a little bit frontally lit, and I know that that is accurate to where this light is being positioned, but it would be kind of nice if we could kick that around to her screen right side. And I know the light would then kind of be passing through this train um, and hitting up here. So you just want to do a little shadow linking, a little light linking to get that to line up. And then once that kind of gets kicked over, because that'll really create some nice shaping on her, um, then the, these eye dings will swing around to the right side as well. Um, the other big thing is I would rough up the specular highlight on these metals um, just because they are like the repetition of them, the ding, 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 and the um, consistency of them and the brightness of them is a little bit distracting away from the character. So I would just kind of rough up that specular highlight and tone those down a little bit. In terms of this guy, um, it would be nice to get a little bit of a rim kick here on this side to separate him off. And then also, like, watch out for his arms. His arms are kind of looking a little bit um, not quite connected. To, like, they look like they're on two different creatures. So I would just try and get maybe a little bit more shaping on this one and maybe just like a touch of the warmth here. But overall, like, I love the color scheme that you're getting here. I love the warm character tones popping off. You did a really great job of zeroing in on his eyes from where we were last week. And, um, yeah, I think, I think you're coming along really well. But uh, just, just a handful of notes there to, to, to really push it to the next level. And also, this, I guess is her, oh, it's money floating. That's what it is. This looks like a name tag on her shirt. And it looks like it's standing out a little bit. So I would just tone, tone those back just a little bit. Cause it's not really like I, I didn't, it took me a while. Like you saw me in real time, just realized that that was money. Um, Glory, this is looking really beautiful. I, I love the, um, again, the aerial perspective. You added a little bit of lens flare. I think that's really great. Um, everything is really starting to piece together. You've got some scale reference in there. That's really good. I would say the last real component that I would like for you to add, um, unless others have some additional qualities, so I think this is falling really well, is just a little, like a touch more um, separation between this level of building and then this level back. So like one and two, so like, I guess this one's closer, and two, just to build a little bit more depth. Like it, you can lift the value of this one slightly and then bring up the atmosphere. So like really like step, step, step. So every, it's almost like every city block gets a little more, a little more, a little more, really kind of build out that depth. But I think this is looking really well. And I, I almost, I would play around with the sky a little bit more because the city itself is looking pretty good. I think you can, and the sky is maybe 30% of the image, 40% of the image. I would, and it's, it's, it's um, I think you could try playing it up a little bit brighter um, maybe a little more saturated uh, and just kind of play around with some cloud placement up there as well. Um, like just paint in, like maybe some paint in some other clouds or add a couple images together. Cause I think you can, I think you can make the sky a little bit more dynamic, maybe some clouds with some uh, warm rim on them as well to match up to the city. Cause I think that could be really, really beautiful, but you are well on your way here. Um, oh, we got a cup chat here. Oh, this is awesome. Hey, yeah. Thanks so much, Matt. Matt. Math, <laughs> my pleasure. Um, okay, so now we've got Harsh. Um, so for this one, I thought, it's a little bigger. I think we can go, oh, sorry, <clears throat> fire truck going by. That's what happens when you go live. So one of the things you wanna watch out for these, like these bright specular highlights on this are kind of drawing my eye up over there. Um, I think the diffuse value on those can come up a little bit. You also kind of have this overall light wash on this that feels a little bit um, kind of uniform across the whole scene. And I would like to see it fall off a little bit more as we're going across. I think we can also probably push the bright values a little bit brighter in this and take the darks down a little bit. Like you can see here how much those, that wash is kind of like lifting all the dark values. 
And I think you can get a little bit more of those dark values in there. Something I would look out for is the um, scale of the wood back here. It feels, it depends. I mean, take a look at some reference. It feels like if I'm, I'm just looking at it against the apples, it feels gigantic. It feels like, like if an apple is like three inches in diameter, like those would be like big 12, 14 inch planks of wood on the wall. Um, and like comparing them to the ground. So just something to be aware of there. And then, um, yeah. I, the, the thing is about the color palette of this, you're really kind of like, everything's real um, similar tones except for the chair and the apples. So uh, I think that's pretty cool. But I would, I would maybe try and play with a different color on the blanket as well and make these a little bit whiter just to kind of highlight those a little bit because everything's kind of feeling a little bit homogenous. Um, and then you can also add a little vignette in post as well. So just vignette that in as well. Um, and then we've got Juan. Uh, so this is the Sci-Fi City. Again, Glory had it as well. So again, remember, do end of the month. Um, this is looking really great. I think the biggest thing that you could add, I love the lasers. You, you really up the game on those. I think those are looking good. Um, I think the attenuation as they fall off in the distance feels pretty, pretty accurate. Um, I think like Glory, maybe you can uh, play with some like super subtle uh, uh, lens flare things with those. Like if one of, maybe with like one of them's pointing directly at the camera a little bit. It, I mean, you, you might play with it and see, realize it doesn't look great. But the biggest thing that I would like for you to work on is getting kind of a, like, if these buildings are like Times Square times a thousand by glowing the entire building, we're going to feel like an atmospheric glow around them. Like they're not going to be, you know, especially at this distance, like if we're going to get a glow and a haze from like street lights down here, we're definitely going to feel a little bit of the glow up here. We're definitely going to feel a little bit of that color around here. And I think just kind of like encompassing that would be really good as well as um, just kind of adding some more uh, atmospheric fog uh, overall to this. It feels a little bit dry, but I think the water looks really great. Um, you could possibly find some more dark values in the water. But, um, but overall, I think that's sitting in there really well. So I would just kind of work on that haze, work on the glow around there, and you'd be in a good spot. Leon, so uh, good adjustments on, on, on from last week. I think these shadows could probably be diffused a little bit more and softened just a bit more. I still feel like we're getting um, the dark values in these clouds are still getting too dark compared to our reference. And I would just like really kind of lift those up because you really want those to be white and fluffy again as, as they're going back into space here. So I would continue to work on that. And then um, if there's any way, I'm trying to think how to do this. So I'm looking at these buildings back here and I'm seeing that like, I just want to see more variation within them a little bit. Like I get that we're kind of silhouetting them, but it would be nice if there was some like, just like hits from the, the sun, even on this building too, just like some rims to pick that up just a little bit more um, and really kind of feel that as well. And then maybe just build up some more clouds over here to kind of, because uh, this, this area on this side feels a little bit, um, a little bit dead and like a, a little bit empty. And I would just kind of fill in, fill that in with some clouds to really fill those in. But, uh, and then, yeah, I guess maybe just lift these. And then, then once you get some more value in here, you can lift the, the aerial perspective, the, the fog, the haze on these as well. Cause it'd be nice to get these. Um, there's not, there's some different, there's definitely a difference in value between this and this, but I would like to see these lifted a little bit more. So like everything in the background, keep bringing it up, keep bringing it up. You had that reference a while ago. I would, I would kind of stick to that. Um, Leon, another one. So we've got, um, uh, I just keep calling these guys the Incredibles in my head. I don't know, um, I don't know who they are, <laughs> but I see that you've gone ahead and defocused the background back behind here um, as a way of kind of getting them to read a little bit and allowing her to fall into that. Uh, it's I like where your head's at, but the problem with that is it starts to feel miniature and they start to feel very little. And if this is like a heroic epic scene, they're supposed to be feeling a little bit larger than life. And right now this feels like it's all taking place at a very small scale. Um, 
in terms of some other lighting things, like the darks, there's, there's a little bit of a disconnection between the, like the blacks on him and her versus these blacks. Like these blacks are super duper black. Um, and I, I just, I'm feeling a little bit of a, of a too big of a disconnect there. I do like the rim that you're getting here. I think maybe a little bit more light coming up underneath him here, but I like where those are falling into place. Um, and then I would almost, from a storytelling standpoint, almost make this like an ominous, because right now it looks like there's no big deal that I could just go ahead and just fly right through there. Um, I would maybe make that like the, a, like a pool of lava or a source of lava in there so that if she, like the way that the eyes are kind of like, I don't want to go in there. I also don't want to go in here. But right now it seems like I could totally just zip through and everything would be cool. Um, yeah, I think, I, think, I think that's where I would take that one. But like you're getting good rims. You're getting, you're getting some good stuff happening in here. This, this kind of um, haze is looking good. I would just cover up this corner too with it as well to kind of get those dark values lifted. Um, but that's all, all looking pretty good. All right, Amrata. So uh, this was just the breakdown. So I'll go ahead and go over into this one. Um, it's looking looking cool. Definitely a Jurassic Park scene in my head. Like that was the first thing I thought. Um, and some things about the overall uh, composition of this. So a couple things. Uh, we always talk about getting us to read the character and figuring out a way to get that character to pop off the background. And one way of, and I didn't actually test this, but let's see how this works. Um, so there's a couple ways that you can get a character to read off from a background. Um, the, you can either go, and, and they're all kind of the same, right? They're, they're, they're contrasting elements. There's, there's light over dark, there's warm over cool, there's dark over light, there's um, complementary colors, there's complex shapes in the background versus simple shapes up front, things like that. Um, and what I'm seeing here in this scene is that there's not enough, um, there's not a lot separating the character from the background. To be, if I'm being honest, the area that is standing out most to me is this kind, of, this orange um, panel right here, because that is just such a stark difference from everything else. It's, so, it's such a complementary color that it really pops out and really is saturated and warm. It just like pops forward at me. Um, so I'm wondering if it wouldn't be beneficial to make the background um, a different hue, like a warmer hue that maybe something like this, because then it like not quite that saturated, but something along those tones. So you're getting more of those feelings in there so that the character itself, the green of the character can read off. Cause I don't think we have a lot of wiggle room on the color of the dino. Although we might, we don't know what they look like. <laughs> um, they could have been any color or maybe using, and then like really kind of, um, playing up the mouth, tongue, teeth element of it. Because it's, it's like, whenever you have a creature who might eat you, you really want to highlight that as the danger point. Um, and what I was doing over here with this black element um, is I was checking the luminosity of it. And this is just my little trick to do that. I overlay, I make a new layer, drop a black, black um, image on it, and then have it do a color uh, um, merge operator. And that way you can really start to see it. So if like, again, if I, cause again, this test luminosity and if I'm squinting my eyes out and I'm looking at this again, my eye is being drawn right here um, to this one, not, not really to the character where we want it. The other thing that you could do is make, like turn off these panels and make this darker and then allow the character to read up a little bit more. And then um, that would, that would be where I start. Um, and then from there we can kind of, piece together if the shaping is working out well. Cause I would like to see the shaping favor. Cause it's not doing us any favors right now. Like I know that we have light coming straight down, um, but usually you want to favor it either coming in from one side or the other, just to get more shaping in here. Cause it's looking pretty flat or to get some more rim around these edge. Um, but the position of it feels very literal and not what you would do in a, like even if this was on a live action film set, they would set up some specialty lights to really get this, our hero character to really read. But it's a cool scene. I like, I like where it's going and I think that you've got a lot of potential there. 
All right, Niha. So we've got this uh, lovely, uh, surreal breakfast that none that I will never have. I will never take the time to make all this. This is beautiful, and I like to cook, so this is a beautiful breakfast. Um, so some things about it. So uh, I think you had some raspberries the last week, and the first thing that I noticed about them was that they, like these are feeling more magenta than red. Let me just go ahead and take, um, you know, let's just take these guys here. And, oh, and I'm just gonna shift the color of them just a little bit and make them more like true red. And I'll just do this too. So I'm gonna take out some of the, some of the blues. And now you can see take away this background. Um, and now you can see the color difference from, from the original of this. And you can see that like that redness now really starts to feel like a raspberry. And additionally, you need to up, up your, um, uh, the transmittance of this because we, we, we it, raspberries don't really get that super dark in there. They're, they're super squishy, they're small. Light just kind of goes screaming through there. Um, and you, can, you, you don't get those kind of deep dark shadows. The other big thing that I was seeing on this, there's a couple. Um, the main light hit is happening back here. And so my focus is kind of back in this region here. And what I really want is to take that spotlight and just push it down here so we can really kind of center it. Because like everything about the composition, the way this blanket falls, the way the plants are, are really kind of zeroing us in on the, the main element here um, on these pancakes. So I would really kind of center the, the, the focal there, the focus there. Um, there's some anti-aliasing issues, which I'm sure this is just a test render. So make sure you get those cleaned up. Um, funny one about the layout is uh, this knife lines up perfectly with the specular highlight. So at first glance, it all feels like one object and it starts to feel like you're having a layering issue. Um, it took me a second to figure out what was going on there. Uh, the maple syrup also feels a little bit uh, runny, like it feels watery. I would thicken up the syrup with the, uh, with the uh, IOR and just kind of make it a little bit more soupy and make a little bit, less, little bit less light penetrating there. Uh, the plants could use a little bit more um, uh, texture on them. They just feel green to me and a little bit too saturated. Um, and their coffee cup over here could get a little bit brighter. Just take this up. Maybe not like that bright, but just for do this real quick. Just maybe sort of like that. Maybe just like up in this region here would be nice. Just because there's going to be a, like this amount of light coming in, there's going to be a lot of light bouncing around. Uh, you could even you know force some a little bit of light in there too to bounce up on that roll. Um, yeah, but I think I think you've got some really good potential here. Again, like a cool scene, cool setup. Also, it looks like, oh, I just noticed this one. It looks like the uh, fog that's coming in back here is not being seen in the refraction in this glass. So just something you might want to be aware of there. You might, what oftentimes happens is you have to render glass elements um, separately. And it's kind of a weird setup and you're seeing a, like how this is happening. So what you would do is you would render the entire scene, comp it out, then take that image plane and put it in the scene um, with just this glass element so that you can pick up the refractions of the final comped out image so that, um, and, then you, and then, you, then you pull that render in because what happens is you're not, again, you're not seeing the fog back there. It's a really tricky one, a bit of a pain in the butt if you ask me, but, um, Definitely something that comes up with characters with eyeglasses and things like that. And that's, that's just kind of my solution for that. Um, because you don't want to, it's also, it also makes it a super light render because instead of refracting all the geometry back there, it's just refracting an image, which is, uh, takes much less calculation. Uh, Nicholas, so we've got this guy in his office. Um, super confused, it's nice. Uh, my first thing about this one that I'm seeing is, and I, oh, by the way, I really like I don't want to forget to mention this. The, the coolness of the background is really creating that warm character to pop forward. Good stuff there. Um, the screens are too, too 
contrasty. Um, I would I would take those back a little bit. It will just allow them to kind of sit back in the space. Um, let's go ahead and do that. And let's do it this way. Super janky way of doing that. So a little bit less contrast. I'll we'll probably do that again. Um, to go over all the brightness can be there. Just want to take down the highs there. And really kind of set those back into space a little bit. Maybe something a little bit along those lines. Um, See now it kind of sets back into space a little bit better. Um, and then the other thing, that's not really helping to see that edge. Um, and then the other thing that I would do is you've got this uh, post it note here on the screen. See if you can get some sub, see if you can get a little glow, some subsurface scattering there. Um, on the character, I've always liked the guy's hair. I think that's working out really well. The rim is causing a little bit of an extreme glow on the subsurface scattering on the ears. It's not bad, it's just tone it down a little bit in this lighting scenario. Um, and then for the eyes, the eye dings are a little bit small. I would, I would work on making those a little bit bigger. And then for the eyes, I think we can go brighter on them. Maybe let's see. some of that and then let's see if we can play with some of those green a little bit too much let's try this for the eyes okay let's take a look at that versus that I think this about this value will feel him like they don't feel buggy. They don't feel like they're bugging out of his head, but they're definitely reading a little bit better. I think that you could do for about that value there. But overall, this is this is looking like a really good scene. Like I'm really excited about this one. I think this one's this one could be uh, could be a really nice potential for you because you've got again some compositional elements that are working out well. Like look at these uh, kind of pillars that are framing everything in. Um, the, the detail, the time that you spent uh, building this office environment has been really great and it's gonna pay off for you even though it's out of focus. Like you can still see a lot of dynamic elements back there. So um, you should be proud of that one. All right, Sandipan. So I think that the, I think we can use some sub, more subsurface on some of this stuff. Um, I like the lighting, I like the layout, I like the, the aspect ratios looking really good, the gradient on the background is looking really nice. Um, the reflection doesn't match necessarily this, it's a little bit diffuse, I would, I would brighten up this reflection and get a little bit more shaping in there. Um, but it's just like, there, there's some secondary elements that are missing from this, let's, let's kind of just zoom in on, on here. Like, I would expect there to be more bounce light up in here, I'd expect like the, it's, it's more like the shader on this just isn't allowing enough light to kind of pass through and kind of penetrate around in that frosting. Cause it's not gonna be like, it's not a hardened plastic. Um, also it feels like there's like straight lines going across here. Just, I mean, that might be something. I mean, maybe that's in the frosting design itself. Um, but that, and then like these, these, M&Ms or these sprinkles or whatever these are, are they're really super small. Um, so you're not gonna like, you're not gonna get these super dark, like super dark, like really just, I, I think it just needs more bounce overall and maybe like a secondary kick and a rim over here, just to kind of lift it up a little bit. And then some of these, a lot of these dark values, like this hard and this hard here, are, are, are getting lost like this one like the stars of david all that stuff is getting lost and i would 
Um, I would lift those up a little bit and then really, like if this is our highlighted area, um, the, I would just make the, the yellow a little bit brighter on that. And also it's feeling a little green. So I would just make that brighter and really get that to pop off and maybe take this guy away too, because uh, it'll just really help that read. All right, so we've got a couple uh, stills from Vidat here. Um, right. So whenever you, this is actually a pretty common thing that happens when you're working on a project, you want to stress test your characters. You want to make sure that they look good under either default lighting. Cause you do this for one of two reasons. One, you're either like making some promo images for your project and you want them to look as great as you possibly can, or you're simulating a lighting scenario from the animated short that you're working on. And you're going to want to do something like this. Like you're going to want to like put them in a night scene or put them in a disco or something and, and really kind of get that to pop. Um, get that that working and make sure that's working well. Actually, let me check. I haven't checked the. Kevin Banker now wants waffles. Yes. Totally fair. All right. By the way, did I share? I think I might have just shared this on my own personal timeline. Did I share this in the thing? Yes, I did. Sorry guys. Okay, shutting it down live here. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Okay, I will. I'll go ahead and post that later. Uh, for those that are in, hopefully you guys are in Zoom here. Hi everybody. All right. Sorry about that. Okay, so now the main thing with this character is we want to create shaping across him, right? And he's looking a little bit too even overall. And we want to create shaping going across him, um, either in any element going across here, across here, across here, um, and and because it's just like too even overall. So I would do that, and then um, that's, that's, that's the biggest one. Like pick a key direction and stick with that and then have that coming in from the side. Um, and you can then do like a little bit of rim light and a little bit of fill light in there as well. Um, but those, that, that would be my big notice is, is on this one. For this girl, you definitely have it a little bit more. Um, her fill value is accurate, but I think with character lighting, you want to, with especially like a young character or a kid, um, you want their fill value to be a, a little bit like, just a touch warmer so they don't start to look gray and desaturated. Um, her hair's looking pretty good. She could use some more specular highlights in the hair um, and as well as in the skin. Like I'm not seeing a lot of specular highlights on the arm, so I would just hit that up a little bit harder too. Um, okay. And then let's see. Just do this real quick. See if I can get over to the Academy of Art Lighting Community. And I'll apologize to everyone there. Okay, um, but for this uh, for this image, we have. Hmm. So this is our city scene. Uh, we're missing some aerial perspective, some atmosphere fall off. But overall, I want to talk about the composition of this one. Um, let's see if we got that there. Just launch this over here and apologize. Okay. So uh, for this one, we're seeing, um, let's take a look at it. Let's do it this way. Again, same, same trick to test the luminosity. Do this. Color is over operator. And if we want to read the character, uh, we're making it a little bit hard on ourselves because we are like, the character gets blended into the background. Like if you're looking at this, our, our eye is gonna go right here, right? Every single time, super bright. Everything else is a very similar value and we wanna create some more dynamic range in there. Uh, let's see. Hello, uh, lighting community. Sorry about that. I was, I realized, yes. Uh, sorry, Donica. I uh, accidentally posted my live video to my general Facebook group. So all of my friends and aunts uh, were 
uh, saying hi to me and I didn't know why, and that was why. So, hello everyone. Don't worry, this is all being recorded. I'll post the video later. Um, so I apologize for that little mix up. So usually it's Facebook's fault, but this time it was me. Okay, but we're still about halfway through, so no worries. Um, okay, so to get, let's take a look at the image again. So to get this character to read, we need to figure out a few things. Number one, I really think we can push the camera in further and get closer to, to him because we've got a lot of dead area here in the foreground that we really don't need. Like we can really push the camera in, um, maybe frame it up so it's, like take a look at, um, there was the other, um, the other submission by Tian Momo and hers was like a, a more of a close up of the dog. I would, I would do a similar framing element um, and get it to be right about there. And then we can, we can kind of start to zero in on this character. So how do we do that? We need to figure out a way of breaking up the lighting, like either put a light source on them to kind of make them brighter over the background. Or if you want, you can keep the super bright building there and then allow the character to kind of get framed up behind it. And then our eye is drawn to this area, but then our character's in front of it and they're like creating like a dark silhouette over light. Um, I like the color scheme of this. Like we do have the nice magenta going overall and that would be nice to maintain. Um, but like using that to get the character to read and then again, add some more fog fall off going back in space there. Um, Facebook, hello Donica. Yes, yeah, sorry again about that. Sorry everyone over here. Uh, if you guys miss anything, don't worry. I will post the, the video of, of the critique later on. So Satya, you get the award for latest submission. I think yours was 857. Uh, right when I was coming on to, to go live, I saw yours. Um, so you, you win that award, so good job with that. Uh, but overall for this one, um, let's take a look at it. Cause I didn't get a chance to review this one too much beforehand. So this is too, like it's too bright in here. Overall, we are not, like the, the rim light's coming in a little bit too strong. Um, so I would, tone that down a little bit. It's also like just bringing around the face just a little bit more. Um, biometric lights looking pretty good. These dark values in the foreground are nice. Um, these books, they feel like they're in the sunlight and almost like this bright patch there, almost like it's posterized, like it's an inverse. Um, Cause I guess it's just green and yellow. It's looking, it's looking, something's funky going on down there because there would be more light on these books, at least from the bounce light there. Um, getting that I see there's a little bit of reflection here and then outside the window um, let's see if I can mock this up so what you don't want to see um, and this might be a result of like the image that you are might be using out there maybe like a JPEG and you don't have the value range to do this but you don't if you if you're gonna blow out the background you don't want to You don't want that to be, you don't want to see those super darks is what I'm trying to say. Um, you want the darks to, there we go. Something along these lines, but like better than this, <laughs> um, because you want to lift the value. So you want, you want it to be bright out there, but you don't want the darks to go super dark because it's not brightness, it's an exposure difference because we're exposing for the inside which is not the proper exposure for the outside. So we would never see like a super black out there. Um, the problem with what I just did is it lifts all, like it takes a black value and it lifts it up, which just makes gray. So, uh, and the reason why I said it was a JPEG is that like the blacks are just gonna be zero, zero, zero. And then when you lift it up with a, with a lighter element, they're just gonna be kind of like a, I don't know, kind of a gross gray color, a flat gray color. Um, so what you want to do is you want to find a, an image with a little bit more dynamic range out there to kind of lift that up. Um, and then a few other things. I think we can still, I think we can go darker on this screen right side. So everything over here can go darker. And then we can kind of focus in more over here, just like in the background. Like we don't really need um, to feel all this up here because we really want to zero in on this character there. But um, yeah, you're coming along nicely on that one. All right, let me come over here. Make sure that I'm not missing anything on Facebook. 
All right. Okay. So now we have Abishak's uh, other submission. I think we're back around to the top. So, yes. So this is the last one, and then we'll I'll hop over to um, the videos that were submitted. And then again, for anyone on Facebook, I apologize. Um, we will. I'll be uh, sharing the video after the fact. Okay. So this one, it's a it's an interesting angle. I think did are both yours uh, square formatting? Yes. So. Um, it's interesting because this angle in the square format feels very like compressed and it makes everything feel a little bit wacky, like something's off, like something's not quite right, um, which is a, which is a interesting baseline to start with. So, uh, we've got the light coming in here. These are good, like pretty interesting shadows, shapes that you're coming up with. It looks like our focus is going to kind of be right here. Um, I would open this shadow up just a little bit more to kind of, uh, get this in here. Um, the horn is interesting. I'm not seeing the reflection of the horn in the in the piano though. Like this is super bright and it just feels like it's kind of floating up there. So I would check on that. Uh, overall, I think you can push the image a little bit brighter too. You can push that up just because like my assumption is that the piano keys being hit by sunlight would be bright. Um, it's like a pure white thing by a very bright light. So I would I would want to push those to be a little bit little bit brighter. Um, Bring down the darks a little bit. Some of these, oops, some of these elements are a little bit saturated as well. Um, like the the roses and uh, the green in the picture there. So I would pull back on the saturation by maybe ten percent or so, or maybe a little more than that actually. And that'll really help, especially just in in those two areas specifically, but maybe a little bit overall. Um, and then I would like to see, so this light here, um, I would either like to see it play a more prominent role or have it go away. Um, the biggest reason why is like this, you need to like, or, or just put like a stand in there at the base. Cause it's just like, that is an impressive light that can just kind of stand up on one leg like that. Um, but give it, give it a little bit more of a su substantial base there. And then. Um, and then we can go from there. But yeah, overall, um, yeah, so open this up, get a little more brightness, um, lamp saturation, and then maybe just allow this area back here to go a little bit darker to kind of get that to pop off there. Also, like this area kind of feels like it's floating. Like there's no, not, like maybe just some ambient occlusion down there to get, to get some more shadows on the ground. Um, but it's a unique layout and a unique uh, setup here. And I think that you can, um, you've got some good opportunities there. Check this out. That makes thanks. And I apologize for the last minute submission. No, I'm only teasing you. You are, you are totally fine. I was, just, I was just giving you a hard time there. Okay, now I'm going to hop over into uh, the video submissions. So these are both from Mathayo uh, and I'm not quite sure what the project is. So I'm just going to give my take on these as we're going through them. Um, so I'm like, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'm not quite sure the goal. Um, one silly, silly thing, just keep it to three dots, not four. That's my nerd brain talking. Um, and as we come down here, it's an interesting camera move because depending on how you're doing it, it feels like it doesn't feel like the camera is rotating. It feels like it's dropping straight down. Um, and then I would expect a little bit more rim or something on, on the, the ship here. So I would just see that. And then one thing about space to be aware of when you're lighting it, um, and you can, you take with this information, what you choose is that you're, and this is, this goes against like all lighting stuff. Like you've got some really nice shaping going on here. Um, but rarely in space will you ever see that because that would be a really large light source and usually suns um you know like it's it's a it's a, it's usually a little bit of a firmer line across there but i but i get why you're doing this and I, I like the glow element and all that stuff so i think that's working out really well um unless these are playing a crucial component i would i would turn them off or tone them down or something because we really want to be focusing in on these guys um this shot's looking pretty good, but like I would want to see more bounce light. 
as his main light source. Because again, if we're looking back on this, he's not really getting hit with a lot of key. Like there's not there's nothing in front of him to light him up. So the light would be coming from like here, bouncing up into him, um, and maybe maybe like here up here. So give you an opportunity to do some under underground creepy lighting up underneath him there. I have a cool pattern. Uh, good stuff here again. Un under lighting as opposed to the over lighting there. This is looking nice. This this light is looking a little bit strong. I would just make it more focused on that. Uh, same deal here. This variation on the blacks is nice. I like that. Cool little framing element. Watch the double dings on the eyes. Um, and same thing here. Like. The lighting feels different between these two. I don't know if it's changing dynamically, but like just looking at the shape here versus what's up there. And then from here, just a little bit more shaping on him. It's it's getting a little bit too flatly. And this this just feels lifted. I would like that to be a little bit darker. Okay, so now you got him. I want to see some more halo and glow. His edge is a little bit too crisp. Um, this, we really want to glow that up a little bit more too. A broader one. This is nice. Uh, I like that, uh, the lightsaber in the eye. Love this little, little bit of nose sticking out there. That's really nice. Again, same thing, more glow around him. Under light. It's just too crisp. It just doesn't feel like a, like a, uh, it doesn't feel like the hologram. It feels a little too, a little too perfect. Um, yeah, you can take this side down just a little bit. That's looking good. I would maybe try and kill that specular highlight and just like work on the specular highlights and the rims and try and get a little bit more variation, like a little bit more specularity in the, the gown here. And then I would take this down here to really kind of focus in on the head. Um, looking in here, I think you can lift that dark value because it's all kind of falling back into space until you get that, then that gets a little bit too dark. Same notes. That's cool. This is a nice shot too. I like this kind of coming through. Uh, it's like the warm and cool. Vader's got a chain link necklace now. It's badass. <laughs> um, yeah, same, de same deal on that set. That's pretty much how I would lay out that one. And then the second one here, I'll take a look at this guy. This one was cool because I was, I was watching it the first time and I was saying to myself like, all right, this is nice. I'm like, where am I supposed to focus? Like, oh, that's where I'm supposed to focus. Okay, cool. So that's nice there. This is looking good. Watch, you've got like a dark edge here. Just watch out for that. It looks like a weird pre-multiplied edge in the, in the comp, maybe. So this is an interesting dilemma of how white to make these because it's, like it's kind of, it feels a little bit too bright to me, especially these up here, uh, which is a really, really, really tough thing to balance. The one thing I do like about it is it's kind of getting his, I, let, I really, really, really like his skin tone because it's kind of, it's not pure white. So it definitely feels like a, a, a weird, creepy fleshiness to it. Um, I would like a little bit more, I don't know if those look better. Maybe just like a little more contrast in, in these arm elements. Cause like if you're looking at how dark this is versus this, it's got like a ton of haze on it. Um, not great. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Depending on, uh, again, same notes on the white here. Um, you can take down these blacks, uh, I guess lift up the blacks a little bit and make these a little bit less contrasty cause they're um, not quite setting into the skin as well. Depending on, again, how well you want this person to read, I would, I would consider goosing that up a little bit. That's cool. Again, get that guy to read up a little bit.
Again, black lines around the edges. Ooh. Yeah, they're real prominent there. This uh, kind of haze has got a little bit too much blue in it. Take that down just a little bit. I really want, like, this is a long buildup into this shot, and I really want those eyes to pop more. And, like, because that's, that's a big payoff. Like, watch out for that specular highlight there. This, this eye is getting, like, washed out by that specular highlight. The whites of the eyes are a little dim. Like, this thing is brighter than the whites of the eyes there, so I'm not, like, not really feeling it. Like, I would like to feel, like, just a, that's, like, the big payoff. Like, really make those pop. Okay. Well, I think that is all of them for tonight. Uh, for info, the black lines are part of uh, some tune stylization that don't, don't show up really good on the compressed video. Ah, okay. So it might just be a video compression thing. If that's the case, don't worry about it. But to me, like, from my standpoint, if I was, if I was looking at that on a, on a demo reel, I would say... Um, my gut would be like, for sure, uh, that, that, that was a, that that was a render of effect. Okay. I've got one more here. Gloria, how's it going? Okay, great. We'll go ahead and add these in. I'll just throw this in as well. Um, okay. So overall, yeah, this is looking a lot better. A lot more dynamic in the background from what we were seeing the last time. Um, like the the cool and uh, the the magenta and blue on the characters, it's working better on him. I'm wondering if, like, looking at this, I think I think we need to favor one over the other. I think this is getting too strong. I think we need to favor the magenta and tone down the blue a little bit um, uh, on the character. And just because it's like, it's really just kind of everywhere, right? Like the magenta is the stronger color, uh, and, the, and the blue really is the secondary one. Is there any way to, of getting some more shaping on these, these tree barks? Um, either from like the glow coming down and really kind of shaping them up that way. Or just like like a like a better combination of the the magenta coming down this way and the blue coming up this way would really help that out. Um, and then depending on how, I, I think if this is all the closer this this character gets to him, I would like to feel that influence a little bit stronger, just because that seems to be the main kind of a cataclysm for uh, all the changes as well. Um, so those would be my notes there. For that deep background, see, looking like back beyond here, I'm wondering if we shouldn't just play that dark as opposed to lifted. Give that a try and see if you like that too. Like make like a dark image back there um, and see if you get that up. But okay, I think that's everyone. If anyone has any questions, throw them in the chat window now and I'll let me take a look. Um, and let's see. But yes, once again, guys, if you are watching this now and I am, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and repost these. Sorry to my family who saw these things that don't need to see that. Um, but yeah, so if you guys have any questions, uh, let me know, keep posting images. We'll, get, we'll, we'll hit them up next week. Um, enjoy your weekend, everyone. Go ahead. And Save this to your faces. Uh, I was playing with my hair, so it's a little bigger than it was before. Enjoy your weekend, everyone. It's been a blast. And uh, thank you all very much. And I hope to, to uh, talk to you all again soon. All right. Happy lighting, everyone.